In this video, we will be looking at some rational word problems. Rachel and Phoebe set off at the same time on a 30 kilometer walk for charity. Rachel, who is a daily walker slash runner, walks 1.4 kilometers per hour faster than Phoebe. During the walk, she sees her friend Monica and stops to talk for 20 minutes. Even with this delay, Rachel finishes the walk two hours ahead of Phoebe. How fast was each person walking and how long did it take for each person to finish the walk? All right, I need to find speed, I need to find time. I'm gonna let my variable represent one of the girl's speeds. So I'm gonna say let x represent Rachel's speed. And we're told that Rachel walks 1.4 kilometers faster than Phoebe, which means Phoebe walks 1.4 kilometers per hour slower than Rachel. So if we know that, we could say let x subtract 1.4 represent Phoebe's speed. Okay. Now, we're told something about their times as well. So I'm going to take the information and try to make an equation out of it without using my variables just yet. Just try to wrap my head around what's going on. So during the walk, Rachel sees her friend Monica and stops to talk for 20 minutes. So whatever her Rachel's time would be, we have to add on 20 minutes. And even with the delay, Rachel walks two hours ahead of Phoebe. She finishes two hours ahead of her, which means Rachel's time, along with the 20 minute walk, along with the two hours, if we add all of those up together, then we'll get Phoebe's time. So Rachel's time plus 20 minutes out of 60, so a third of an hour, plus the two hours, all of that will give us Phoebe's time. Okay, now we have this idea, but how can I use the speed to come up with an expression to represent the times. Well, we just have to use our speed distance time formula. We should know that speed is equal to distance over time. And if we ever forget, think about your speed when you're driving, for example. You're driving, let's say 80 kilometers per hour. Kilometers distance per hour time, so D over T. If we know that this is true, we could cross multiply this to get the fact that distance is equivalent to speed times the time. But I want time. So if I divide both sides by speed, then here's a useful formula for us. Time is equal to the distance divided by the speed. And we know the distance the girls walked. It's 30 kilometers. And we know their speeds in terms of x. So. Now we can create an equation out of this. Rachel's time will be total distance is 30 over her speed, her speed is x. Then we add a third of an hour and we add two hours and we get Phoebe's time. Phoebe's time is the same 30 kilometers, but her speed is x minus 1.4. Okay, now we have our equation and we're ready to solve. So I'm just gonna get myself a common denominator here. This is over one. And if I have an X and a three in the denominator, I need three X as my denominator. So here's what I'm multiplying. So that means we have 90 plus one X plus six X all over three X. I'm just gonna collect my like terms in that numerator and then I'll be ready to cross multiply. Okay, so these are gonna get multiplied, which means I'm gonna have to do some proper distributive property here. And then the three X and the 30 will get multiplied. So now 
to do my distribution here, I'll have 7x squared minus 9.8x plus 9dx minus 126 equals 9dx. When I bring this 9dx over to the other side, it'll become negative, so the 9dx's cancel out. So what we actually have is 7x minus 9.8x minus 126 equals 0. Now you can try to factor this or do quadratic formula. Because of that decimal in the 9.8, I'm going to do quadratic formula, although I do think this is factorable. So 9.8 plus or minus negative 9.8 squared minus 4 times 7 times negative 126 all over 2 times 7. And when we clean up the square root part, we get 3624.04 under the square root. And now we can get our two options for x. And when I do the plus version, I get positive 5, which makes sense. When I do the minus version, I get negative 3.6. That does not make sense for either of their speeds. So here's Rachel's speed. And Phoebe's speed is going to be 1.4 less than it. So therefore, Rachel's speed is 5 kilometers per hour, and Phoebe's is 3.6 kilometers per hour. And in terms of their times, for Rachel's time, it's going to be 30 divided by her speed. So 30 divided by 5 is 6 hours. So Rachel's time is six hours and Phoebe's is the six hours plus the extra two hours so eight hours plus the 20 extra minutes that Rachel spent talking so Phoebe's is eight hours and 20 minutes and there we are a little distance speed time type of question that results in a rational function and rational equation. Next, Sandra can paint a kitchen in six hours. Roger can paint the same kitchen in seven hours. How long would it take for both working together to paint the kitchen? Okay, well first, let's start with the let statement. Let x represent time it takes for both of them to paint the kitchen. Now, Sandra can paint the kitchen in six hours, which means in one hour, so for Sandra, in one hour, she paints a sixth of the kitchen because it takes her six hours to paint the full kitchen. For Roger, it takes him seven hours to paint. So he'll paint a seventh of the kitchen in one hour. And together, they take X hours to paint the kitchen. Together, in one hour, they'll paint one over X of the kitchen. So that means in one hour, Sandra will paint a sixth Roger will paint a seventh. And together, if we add their, the amount that they paint in an hour, together they'll paint one over x. And there's our equation. It's a lot easier than the previous one. But now, let's solve it. So I'll get a common denominator. I'll multiply the first fraction by 7, the second by 6, and the common denominator is 42. So that's 13 over 42 equals 1 over x. And when we cross multiply, we'll have 13x equals 42. And divide both sides by 13. And there we are. Now this is approximately 3.23 hours. Or 3 hours. And if we do 0.23 or the entire decimal times 60, we'll get around 14 minutes. Therefore... 
but we'll take them. Three hours and 14 minutes to paint. All right, one more example here. Garth can row five miles per hour in still water. It takes him as long to row four miles upstream as 16 miles downstream. How fast is the current? Okay, they asked me about the speed of the current. That's what I'll have for my let statement. Let x represent speed of current. Now we've already established that time is equal to distance divided by speed. And it takes him four miles upstream, the same amount as six mile, 16 miles downstream. So let's see, four miles upstream. Now, what is Garth's speed when he's going upstream? Well, he's going five, five miles per hour, but when he's going upstream, the current is going against him. So it's gonna reduce his speed because he has to fight that current which means five minus X would represent the speed that he's going at upstream. Downstream, we have 16 miles, and the speed, because he's going downstream, will be his speed plus the speed of the current because it's pushing him forward faster. So it's gonna be five plus X. So here we go. Our equation represents the time for him to row four miles upstream is exactly the same as the time it takes him to go downstream 16 miles. So using again, distance divided by speed. Now I'm just gonna cross multiply. So four times five and four times X equals 16 times five and 16 times negative X. I'll rearrange. So 20 X equals 60. Divide both sides by 20, and we get 3. Therefore, the speed of the current is 3 miles per hour. And there we are, three different styles of questions that will produce a rational equation to solve.